This week, in another universe on July 1st, Israel would have annexed at least part of the West Bank, probably causing a global diplomatic and political uproar. But in this universe, annexation is still just talk, though it may also still happen. So let's talk about what July 1st was all about and what's actually going on with annexation. I'm Lev Gringaus, and welcome to The Jews Are Tired, your podcast about Jewish news. So before launching in, I just want to explicitly say that this is not going to be a podcast about the moral arguments for or against annexation. Lots of people have lots of things to say. If I haven't made it clear enough, I'm actually far less interested in what people think and far more interested in what is actually going on. This doesn't mean that the moral argument isn't important. We're talking about a pretty significant political move in a pretty volatile part of the world, though, then again, right now where isn't a volatile part of the world, but this is also a move that can have a significant effect on many, many people's lives and their livelihoods. But again, despite its importance, I want to stay focused here, not on the moral conversation, but on the basic question of what the hell is going on right now. And to be honest, this is a one-sided conversation. Here, only Israel is deciding what to do and deciding for Palestinians what will happen. So the question of what's going on is all about Israel, which brings us to July 1st. So the relevant background on this is, back in January, President Trump's administration released a peace plan for the Middle East, but primarily for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which settled on this idea. Israel could annex 30% of the West Bank and the other 70% of the West Bank, with some exchanges of territory, was then set aside to be a future Palestinian state. Now, Palestinian leadership already rejected this plan, and in fact, so did many Israeli right-wing settlers in the West Bank who opposed the existence of any Palestinian state ever, even with annexation. But Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu took this plan to be a green light, to carry through an often threatened but never executed move to annex significant parts of the West Bank. Now, when I say threatened, I should clarify. Annexation is something Netanyahu has been promising in election campaigns for the past several years, and then once he became prime minister, he usually dropped the issue. This time, though, not so much. Israel had national elections in March of 2020 that, through a complicated series of political events covered in previous episodes of this podcast, resulted in Netanyahu remaining prime minister and putting together an Israeli government. And part of the agreement between the several political parties that formed the current Israeli government said that, hey, Trump said we can annex parts of the West Bank, so let's say anytime after July 1st, we can do the thing. So basically a self-imposed kind of, you know, the opposite of a deadline, basically, that theoretically once July hit, annexation can be a go. What some people took this to mean was that annexation would happen on July 1st, which was part of the hype around the date. And to be fair, knowing how things in the Middle East can kind of just happen, there was a chance that it would be the real deal. But July 1st came and July 1st went, which leaves us with the question of why? If annexation is the big move Israel is going to make right now, why didn't it? The simplest answer may be that nothing is going on because Israel is currently just a mess. Back in March and April, when COVID-19 started to spread, Netanyahu locked down Israel so quickly and to such an extent that it looked like the pandemic was over in the blink of an eye. Israel had something like sub-300 deaths, a few thousand infected people, and really it was kind of amazing how Israel got the pandemic under control so quickly and so effectively. But then... Israel reopened, and even though leading epidemiologists and doctors warned that reopening was happening too quickly, Netanyahu kept reopening. And then the pandemic reemerged. So over the course of June, COVID-19 cases in Israel have gone back up. Not only that, but the response in the government has been so terrible that the top health official leading the pandemic response in the health ministry resigned and published her resignation letter on Facebook to blast government in action. The letter, by the way, was something like eight pages and 8,000 words of why everything the current Israeli government is doing is bad 
and not working when it comes to the pandemic. On top of that, Israel still has around a 20% unemployment rate because of lockdowns. And to give you an example of how bad things are economically, Netanyahu just hosted a Zoom call with a bunch of Israeli small business owners, maybe a couple of days ago. And according to reports, a lot of that Zoom call was taken up by those small business owners really just chewing out Netanyahu about needing financial help and not getting it from the government. Keep in mind also that only about a week and a half ago, a Knesset parliamentary committee voted to give Netanyahu roughly 1 million shekels worth of tax breaks. That's something like $270,000 of tax breaks for the past decade. So retroactively, giving the prime minister a massive tax break during a public health and financial crisis is, I mean... Look, I don't need to pretend to be objective on that. Priorities are not where they should be for the Israeli government right now. So putting all of this together, annexation is really more of a political talking point right now. But it may be delayed or even totally put off because there is so much more to deal with. It also doesn't help that, according to the defense establishment in Israel, so, you know, generals and people in security and spy agencies, no one has seen a plan or started preparations for annexation yet. Nobody knows what's going on. So it's kind of hard to pull off a massive move when your security people don't even know what's going on. But I also want to be realistic about this, which means taking annexation seriously. I'm partly convinced, to be honest, that it'll be totally delayed, and then if Joe Biden becomes president of the United States in November, there will be no U.S. support for the move and it'll be totally dead in the water. At the same time, and this is what I mean by taking it seriously— there's a great piece in the Times of Israel by journalist and analyst Chaviv Retigur where he breaks down what may be the most significant explanation of what's driving Netanyahu now to annexation and why it may actually happen very soon. And just to back up a moment, there's a lot of speculation about why this is happening now. Truthfully, no one knows why annexation is on the agenda now, particularly by a prime minister who has usually just ignored it when it comes to actual policy. Some think that Netanyahu, you know, really thinks annexation will give him the right-wing political support to stay in power for longer. Others say Netanyahu is just trying to secure his legacy in Israel by making annexation a reality. But what Gur says in this Times of Israel piece is that annexation may actually be a response to declining American and Western global power. Think about it. For a few years now, America has been doing all it can to withdraw from the Middle East. After the war on terror and the disaster in Iraq and Afghanistan, few Americans really want more wars in the Middle East, and America's foreign policy over the past couple of years has been trying to get out of the Middle East as much as possible. And when we're thinking about the balance of power in the world and in the Middle East right now, we have to be honest, America isn't so much top dog anymore. Russia and China are the big players. Russia has politically and diplomatically subverted European countries and America, taking advantage of political chaos to create even more chaos. Russia is also supportive of Turkey, Iran, and Syria, which are some of the big players in the Middle East right now, or at least locations of very important conflicts in the Middle East. China is an economic powerhouse on the leading edge of technological development, and even more clearly, as sort of a demonstration of what the world has come to, China right now has roughly a million Chinese Muslims in concentration and re-education camps, where people are being forcibly sterilized, and truly God knows what else is being done to them there. It's just a massive violation of human rights, and all America and European countries, the United Nations, all anybody can do is stumble around and sit on their hands. So all this paints the picture again that Western global power is going away. And that means for some Israeli security analysts that the global order of law and power and diplomacy upheld by the United States is not going to help anyone anymore. So Israel should secure itself in the West Bank and annex what it needs to be prepared militarily for any threat. And that, in this Times of Israel piece, is what Gur says is motivating Netanyahu and annexation. While Trump is president and could give the okay, that's the window of opportunity for the sake of security over the long term. Now, you don't have to agree with that view. The point is that it may be that Netanyahu really is driven this time to annex at least parts of the West Bank, which is important to understand. So for now, we wait and see.
I personally don't think annexation will happen in July, but it also may be right around the corner. And believe me, there's still that moral argument to be had. Is annexation good for Israel? Bad for Israel? What will it do to the Palestinians? Truthfully, and I'm guilty of this as well, lots of Jews don't often think enough about what this all means for Palestinians in the West Bank. However, there are about a million op-eds exploring that, and I'm sure I'll get to it on this podcast, but if you're interested, go ahead and Google and read some of them. But for now, here's where things stand. Something's on the horizon, but no one quite knows what. This has been this week's The Jews Are Tired podcast. I'm Lev Gringaus. Don't forget to subscribe and share, and hopefully next week, the Jews will get some rest. The Jews Are Tired is a product of Jewfolk, Inc. For more information, go to tcjewfolk.com or email the show at podcast at tcjewfolk.com.